Hi guys, my name is Katie and welcome to this video for the Civil Service Qualifying Test. Now this video is going to focus on the Administrative Grade Test and this is all for administrative roles within the Civil Service, okay? So before I move on, don't forget to subscribe to the channel because it is free and it will keep you updated with more of my career and education videos. Okay, so what is the civil service? So the UK civil service plays a significant role as part of the government. The civil service helps to develop and implement new policies and procedures and enforces them in society. Foremost, they not only work alongside the government, but they are the voices of society. They primarily provide a service directed to all the people across the country in order to support and assist issues such as paying benefits, health care, providing pension schemes, operating effective prison systems, issuing driving licences, and developing society policies and procedures. So the civil service, so people who work for the civil service are officials who work under government surveillance. They are coordinated and monitored by the Prime Minister to guarantee that policies are met and procedures are enforced. The civil service does not include all public sector employees. Employees of the police service, armed forces and local government and councils are not part of the civil service. So with the civil service comes great responsibility. Her Majesty's civil service was imposed to instigate and execute important decisions made by the government and thus it plays a vital role in all segments of society including safety, security and stability. So the civil service test, so the civil service play an accountable role in regards to both public and government sectors. The civil service uses four key values to assess candidates. So we have integrity, so the ability to put obligations of the public service above personal interests and or beliefs. Honesty, so being able to demonstrate high levels of truthfulness and openness. Objectivity, so being able to display objective views and opinions on certain areas, basing decisions and policies on rigorous analysis and evidence to form a plausible and valid outcome. And finally, impartiality, so being able to serve the power of the government in charge and meet the needs and merits in which they enforce. So the administrative grade test, so as you would expect, the term administrative in the civil service is just like any other administrative role. If you join the civil service as an administrator, you will be involved in clerical, numerical and verbal duties, including operating computer systems, filing, updating records, interacting with customers, financial administration and dealing with queries, complaints and other important information. So the administrative grade tests are used to assess a candidate's capabilities and skills in regards to the administrative roles and hope to determine whether a candidate is qualified and suitable for that job role. So the types of assessments, so we have handling data, data interpretation, quantitative reasoning, correct sentences, word swap, missing words, following procedures and speed and accuracy. And I'm going to provide some sample questions of each of these just so you have a better understanding of the types of questions you will be expected. But first, let's have a look at some general tips for passing. So ensure your mathematical skills are up to scratch. So people who struggle with maths may find this test somewhat difficult. A lot of the questions are based on mathematics, therefore you need to fully grasp how to answer the questions. Try and practice these questions without a calculator, so this will make you feel more confident when it comes to your real test. Make sure you check your answers to these practice questions in order to learn from your mistakes. Understanding where you went wrong will help you significant, significantly when you take another test. Educated guesses are worthwhile, so if you find yourself stuck on a question that offers multiple choice, you should answer it anyway, so you're probably able to eliminate some of the obscure answers and then take an educated guess. This way you are more likely to gain a couple of extra marks here and there as opposed to not answering them at all. So handling data. So these types of questions will be given will give you numerical data and you'll have to answer the question accordingly. 
So you should be able to answer these questions without a calculator in the time frame of approximately 30 seconds per question. So, for example, a medium-sized egg weighs 60 grams. What would the weight be if you had nine medium-sized eggs? So how to work it out? So if one medium-sized egg weighs 60 grams, you want to work out the weight of nine of these eggs. So you would simply do 60 multiplied by nine, which would give you 540. Data interpretation. So data interpretation is used as a way to assess a candidate's ability to extract information from tables, charts and graphs and answer the questions that follow it in relation to that data. So here we have our chart. So how many bracelets were sold over the six month period? So the bracelets, as you can see, is shown by the black square there. So you would need to add these up accordingly. So for January we have 24, February we have 4, March we have 20, April we have 22, May we have 18 and June we have 28. So all of those added together would give you your answer of 116. Quantitative reasoning. So quantitative reasoning is a type of psychometric testing that assesses a candidate's ability to deal with high levels of problem solving and mathematical formulas. Quantitative reasoning is used to assess your basic mathematical understanding and demonstrate your ability to apply your knowledge in relation to solutions and critical interpretation. So there are two lists of numbers. One list contains 10 numbers, the average of which is 20. The second list contains 8 numbers. The average of this list is 22.5. If the two lists are combined, what is the average of the numbers in the new list to the nearest whole number? So how to work it out. So list 1 equals 10 numbers times 20, which is the average, will give you 200. List 2 is 8 numbers times 22.5, which is the average, is 180. So if you add those together, so 180 plus 200 will give you 380, divided by 10, the 10 plus 8, which is how many numbers there are gives you 21.111 and to the nearest whole number that is 21. So correct sentences, so the civil service test will measure a candidate's ability to identify errors in terms of sentence structures and language. So out of these um, sentences you will need to work out which one is correct based on grammar and punctuation and as you can see A uses the wrong there so therefore this is incorrect. B uses the wrong hour and relevant is spelled incorrectly. C provides the most logical sentence structure with correct grammar and punctuation. But before we select this as our answer, let's rule out answer D. So graduates should not have an apostrophe and is therefore incorrect. So our answer is in fact C. Word swaps, you will be given a sentence of which two words will be swapped with one, one another. Your aim is to work out which two words have been swapped and have replaced one another's positions within the sentence. So the sentence is, hearing music can be a result of listening to loud loss and having earpieces in. So how to work it out, so which two words have swapped round with one another. So if you read the sentence out loud, like I just said, you will all notice that it doesn't quite make any sense. So hearing music can be a result of listening to loud loss and having earpieces in. Now I've selected these two words because if you swap those around, the sentence would read much more clearer. So hearing loss can be a result of listening to loud music and having earpieces in. So that sounds more grammatically correct. So these are the two words that you would choose for your answer. Missing words. So for this section on missing words, you will be presented with a sentence. Each sentence will have two words missing, so your job is simple. Fill in the missing words with the words provided. So it was dot 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 choice where they went to college dot 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 are some great colleges to choose from. So the words we are given are there and there. And you need to work out which one you would place in either gap. So it was there choice. So this would be the possessive form so that would be in the first gap. It was their choice when, where they went to college, full stop. There are some great colleges to choose from. So th this there is 
talking about a place okay so your answer would be there with the EI with and then there with the ERE okay speed and accuracy so speed and accuracy questions are designed to test your ability to work under pressure in a small time scale it will look at not only how capable you are of answering the questions quickly but also how well you answer them accurately so here are your two lists and you need to work out whether the two columns match okay so as we can see the first three columns do match with one another because we've got 4, 4, W, E, 1, 4, 4, W, E, 1. So these two do match. 1, O, L, 2, 3, D, 1, O, L, 2, 3, D. Again, that matches. D, D, 2, E, R, D, D, 2, E, R, that matches. So so far, three pairs match. But the uh, last pair doesn't match because here we've got 1, C, and that's I, C. So this doesn't match. So how many pairs match? Well, we've got three, okay? And finally, we have following procedures. So, the following procedures test is designed to test a candidate's ability to follow simple instructions and procedures. The test allows candidates to interpret and analyze the information provided in, in order to come to some conclusion. So, here we have our procedures. What is the next stage after a request made for a decree at NICE? So you need to find this part of the diagram and find out the one before it. Okay, so let's find the decree nicely. So that's G in the procedure. So we need to find the what the um the part that happens before this. So this would be F, judge considers petition. So this would be your answer. Okay, so that completes it for the civil service qualifying test. And hopefully it gives you some understanding of the types of tests involved. Now remember, don't forget to subscribe to the channel because there are loads more career videos and education videos for you to watch. Thank you for listening. I hope this has helped and I wish you all the very best of luck.